Hi, this is from Python to Rust part 3. In our last video we looked at how we can use strings in Rust to store genome data, DNA sequences. We will be using strings extensively in our future code, as they are very convenient when it comes to storing and manipulating DNA or RNA data. In this article we are taking a look at one more very important data structure we are going to need for more advanced algorithms. And those are dictionaries in Python and hash maps in Rust. After we compare both we will implement a DNA reverse complement function. So here's the code we wrote in our last video, where we implemented a random sequence generator and a transcription function. So today we're going to create one more file. Let's go to Python first and create the data structures.py. I'm going to go back to Rust and create the same file, but of course it's rs, not .py. So let's start by taking a look at Python dictionaries. So we have a reference point for our Rust hash map version. And here's the function. Of course, it's a very simple function. We have a dictionary here, an empty one, and then we create three keys, key one, key two, key three, and we give them a value. And in the case of the line five, we are assigning a list of values. As we know, it's very easy in Python to access the values and the keys and just print them out. And you just do print key and it gives you the value one. We can always check if the key is in a dictionary by saying if this key number three is in dictionary. If it is, let's print out the whole value, and then let's print out just this value from that list. That's the line 11, right? And then we can use a for loop to iterate through items in that dictionary, and we call them conveniently key and value, and we print them out. Now let's include this new file into our main file so we can call this. So from data structures dictionaries, right? And we can comment this out for now, and let's call this now. We're not going to call a print statement because this function is more of a demonstration function and it handles all the printing inside of itself here. Now let's run this code. And of course that's the output that we have expected, but let's take a look at the function uh, versus the output. So, so the first print statement is on line 7, and we're just printing out the value of a key 1. And of course we're getting this value 1, right? This is a match. Next one, we do two prints. We print out the whole key 3 which has a list, and here's the list, and then we print out just the second value from that list, which is this. And of course the last three prints, because we have three items in our dictionary, we are printing them out this way. And we have all these values, this, that, and then the list. Okay, so this makes sense. Now let's see how we can do the same in Rust, of course. Now let's take a look at the Rust version. If dictionaries are part of standard Python, then hash maps need to be included if we want to use them in Rust. Okay, so this is how you include hash maps. You're saying standard library collections hash map. And let's actually create the function called underscore hash map. As you might remember, we are using the underscore here to avoid the error dead code because we're going to comment this function out in the future when we don't use it. And this is just to make sure we don't see that warning that we have a function that we don't use. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to add first four lines to this function and compare them to Python. Okay. So here we are. So the first thing we do is we create an empty dictionary and here we create an empty hash map. It's very similar. So here you can see it's almost identical. If in Python you can just say key and the value, here you have to use an insert method. Okay. So if we want to add multiple values, like here we added a list as a value and here we want to have the same thing, we have to use an array or a vector. And if you use a vector in one of the values, you have to make sure that all of the values in the hash map are the same type. Otherwise, the Rust is going to complain. You can experiment, you can try removing one of these vectors here and just including, let's say, a string and see what Rust will tell you. So now let's try a naive print the same way we did here on the line 7 Python. Okay, so here's our naive print. We're saying test hash map. Can we see what the value is stored of the key one? Okay. And let's save this and let's go back to our main and include it so we can run and test our code. So of course it's include. So now we have included this file. Let's call our function. And of course we're not passing anything to it and we're not expecting anything in return. Let's run it. Okay, we can see that we're trying to print out the same way we did in Python, but it says cannot be formatted with a default formatter. But it does even more. Rust tells us 
you should be trying to use this kind of notation because you are trying to print out a value which is a vector and you can't just print it out, you need to unwrap it first and then you can print out its values. So instead of fixing this line, let's actually comment this out, copy it and fix it. All we need to do, as Russ suggests, is do this, save it and let's see if the error goes away and it does. Let's try running it now. All right, so the first print statement works. How about these three lines of code? Here we are. And it's very similar as well. If in Python we just do if the key is in dictionary, then we do some logic here. In Rust, we just have to use the function called contains keys. Okay, so we're saying if our test hash map contains a key three, then print this out. And of course, we'll learn that we have to use this format for printing out vectors. And we are doing exactly the same thing as we did here. Let's try running this. And we can see it works. So in the first case, it just gives us the value. In the second case, we're printing out the whole vector here that has two values. And in the third print, we're saying, can you print out the second value, zero, one, one, okay? And you can see that it actually returns a string. Here it was a vector or a list in Python, but here we're saying specifically, can we print out the value number two, which is a string, and it gives us string. And now to the last part, we're gonna use the loop to loop through keys and values and print them out. And it's exactly the same as in Python. Or even easier, because here we don't actually need to specify, can you give me the keys and values from the dictionary items? So we're just saying key values from that dictionary. So here we are passing the dictionary by reference, so we can still use that dictionary because it's mutable. We want to use it after we print these keys and values. So now let's run the whole code again. And of course it works, okay? So here's the output for Rust. And let's switch to Python. Now you can see that they are identical, okay? So now that we have looked at how dictionaries and hash maps work, let's try using this code to replicate the reverse complement function we wrote in our DNA toolkit. Now again, let's start from the Python version as a reference for the Rust version. If you're following my DNA toolkit series, you will be familiar with this function. Okay, we're passing a string into it and we're generating a complement string, meaning we're swapping characters. If it's A, we're going to return T. If it's T, we're going to return A. And so on right here from this dictionary. So this dictionary here is used as a mapper. We're looking up a character A, for example, and we're grabbing what it is pointing at, which is T. If we're looking for T, it's pointing at A and so on. Okay, so you are probably familiar with this very basic Python code where we have a dictionary with predefined keys and values, keys and values. Of course, there are four keys and four values. We create an empty string. And then this for loop, we are looping through every character in the DNA string and we're passing it to that dictionary. And of course, it will return a value. So this is a key, nucleotide key. If it's A, is going to look at the key A, it's going to return T, okay? And we're just accumulating with this plus equals that value in that string. And just before we return the DNA complement string, we are reversing it by doing this, okay? Let's go back to our main.py file, include that again on the separate line, DNA toolkit, import reverse complement. And of course, Let's comment this out for now and call our reverse complement function, but we need to pass a string to it. Let's do a simple test, ATCG. Now that we have passed the string to our function, we have to print out what it returns. So we're gonna use print statements on this function. So we're giving it ATCG, it should return TAGC reversed. Here it is, CGAT. Okay, so reverse complement function is very simple, it works. So how do we go about replicating this in Rust? So here's the reverse complement function and we're trying to replicate Python functionality as much as possible. So on the line 20, we are creating a static immutable translation hash map. It's immutable because we know the values beforehand. We're gonna specify the same values as we specified in uh, Python version and they're not going to be changing as the program runs. So there's no point in making it mutable. Okay, and here we have these three extra methods we have to call because when we create this hash map from character character pairs here, it's actually an array. So this part is actually an array and we have to say explicitly, can you please take this array and copy it into a collection and return an iterator. So in the future we can iterate through this hash map. 
I'm going to leave a couple of links here so you can read more about these functions, but this is how it's done in Rust. So on line 25, of course, we're creating a new string, the same way we did in our last videos here. It's an empty string, new, and it's mutable because we need to accumulate values. And you can see another difference if we use plus equals here in Python, here we have to use our push function. And we are giving it this translation hash map and we're passing our nucleotide when we loop through every single character by reference here. So if we take a look at the last couple of lines of code here, there is a subtle but very important difference. If we take a look at the Python version, here's our DNA string and we loop through that string here while grabbing characters. And then before we return that, string, we are reversing it. In Rust, we can see that we're just returning a string because the reverse is done in this for loop. So we're saying, DNA string, can you please return an iterator over your character so we can iterate over each character? And before you return that iterator, can you actually reverse that sequence of characters for us? So when we loop through every single character in that sequence, it's already reversed for us, okay? So now let's run a Rust version to test if the code actually works. We have already included in a toolkit which this new function is a part of, so we don't need to include it, we just need to call this function. We can actually copy the name so we don't have to type. Okay, let's comment this out the same way we did in Python and call this function. Let's do a naive approach first. We're gonna try kind of passing the string to it, and of course we need to print what it returns. Print line, oh, yes, okay. Okay, so we can see that there is something wrong. We are doing the same print as we did in Python and we're passing a string to it, right? And we know that our function accepts string, but there is some problem here, there's an error. Let's run and see what Rust will tell us. Rust tells us expected a structure, which is a string, but found a slice, str. We discussed strings and slices in our previous video. And on top of that, it's uh, waiting for a reference to a string. If we go back to our function, we can see that not only that it's waiting for a string, it has to be a reference to a string. That's the reference character here. So what we need to do, we need to cast that slice str to a string by doing this to string, okay. And then we need to pass it as a reference as we remember. Let's save that and we see that the error goes away. Let's try running it now. And we can see now it works. So let's run the Python version and it should return CGAT. So that's the Python version and that's the Rust version again. Okay, so this seems to work just fine now. Let's take a look at one more thing. What if we need to add dynamic elements to a hash map? Let's look at this piece of code as a demonstration, okay? So this is how we create a dynamic hash map again. We're gonna create a mutable dictionary and we can add these values. This is gonna be very useful when we're gonna be looking for motifs or k-mers in our big sequences and building a hash map out of them. So I'm gonna leave this as a commented version here and we're gonna uncomment the original version to replicate the Python's functionality. Okay, and one last thing we're gonna do is we're going to uncomment this random sequence generation and let's pass this string instead of a random string, okay, to a reverse complement. We can actually see that C is G, A is T, C is G again, because the reverse complement, a complemented and then the string is reversed. Let's do the same for Rust. Here's our random sequence. And this is gonna be easier because we just need to pass our DNA by reference. And let's run it now. Okay, here's the result. So we have TCC, so it has to be AGG, AGG. Okay, so this is it. Thanks a lot for watching and listening. I'm going to leave two links in the description to two amazing videos on hash maps and Rust. So the more kind of sources of information you have, the better. And as always, you can follow me on any of these social platforms and these videos are also available on library platform. Until next time, Rebel Coder, signing out.